Hey guys, how's it going? My name's The Breath, and welcome to this new challenge video. Today, I'm asking another ridiculous question in Can you beat Pokemon Leaf Green with only a Shedinja with no attacking moves? As if that wasn't bad enough, I'm also doing something else particularly stupid. I'm getting rid of the script, and this is all going to be pure commentary on my part. Of course, this is just a test, so by all means leave a comment if you want the script back for the next video, or if you prefer this sort of style, let me know and I will carry it on if that's what you guys prefer. But I guess the main question is, why Shedinja and why no attacking moves? And the honest answer is, I really just felt like jumping on the Shedinja bandwagon. Now I know I've seen runners like MDB, ER Alpha, Arantula, they've done really successful videos with this Pokemon before, but they all forgot that there is another way that you can use Shedinja. But the main purpose of this video is just to try something new and have a little bit of fun. So hopefully I can convey that to you. Because I can tell you now, having done this run, it wasn't fun to play through. But before we jump into it and I take you through why it wasn't particularly fun, let's start with the rules. This is a challenge run as ever, so it's Shedinja only in battle, no items in battle, and TM usage is allowed. But there's an additional rule, and I've made it that if Shedinja can learn a move from any generation, from 3 through to 8, then it is allowed to be used in this run. Some of you might be complaining, and I can probably even hear the old pitter-patter of the keyboard as you angrily type the comment down below. But breath, this is cheating because you can use moves that Shedinja can't learn in this generation. And to those of you that want to type that comment, please do, because I hear comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, that's dead, I'm not doing that again. But to those of you, all I can say is, I'm trying to beat a game with a Pokemon that's got 1 HP that can't attack anything. Let me have it, please. But with that, I say we get straight into it. So the game begins and we choose the female character, giving ourselves the inventive name of Breath, because nobody saw that one coming. We also get to name our rival, and I do flick between a couple of names, starting with MDB, going through to Plonk, but then realising that Plonk is too much of a uh, word that I'm not going to say because I got demonetised last time I said it this early in a video, and going back to name him MDB. Of course, MDB stands for Madry Bread, because if the absolute pinnacle of Pokemon Challenge runs can use a Shedinja, I'm going to try and one-up him by not using any attacking moves. But from there, everything proceeds as normal. We make our way up north, only to get viciously dragged back down to the lab by an old man in a creepy coat. When we're safely locked inside, we get access to our Shedinja for the first time, giving it the nickname of Husk, obviously because Shedinja is a husk of an Incarda, but also because it's going to turn me into a husk of my former self because this challenge video has killed me. Anyway, now's the time we get to talk about the moveset, and I've given it the cheesiest moveset I could think of that is still legal in Shedinja's learnable moveset. Double Team, Sand Attack, Confuse Ray, and Will-O-Wisp. For anyone wondering, Will-O-Wisp can't be learnt by Shedinja in Gen 3, but it does become a TM in Gen 4 that it can learn, so therefore, I'm having it. It's legal, I don't care. Now the good news is that we do get access to Toxic as a TM, and I know that I spoke to at least one person who suggested that I put it on the starting moveset, but there's a reason that I've decided not to. Anyway, from there we obviously head up north, we grab Oak's parcel, we run it back to him, and then we go straight away to challenge the rival fight, the optional rival fight, and I do it at such a low level because, well, he doesn't actually have a move yet that can affect us. For anyone who's been living under a rock for the last god knows how many years and doesn't know, Shedinja has the ability Wonder Guard, which means it can only get hit by super effective attacks. And yeah, he can't actually hit us, so it's a pretty easy win. Brock is the first trainer, and I believe the first trainer in the entire game so far, who can actually hit us, and that means can kill us. The strategy is simple, go plus 6 evasion with double team, go minus 6 accuracy with sand attack, 
set up the status affliction, this time it's Will-O-Wisp and Confusion for just that extra bit of damage on top. With that done is all basically just waiting for RNG to be on our side and there's a lot of bloody waiting for RNG to be on our side in this run, this is bad. But the good news is that thanks to that we can defeat Brock relatively straightforwardly at level 8, at level 9 I believe when we finished, but we went in at level 8 and I don't think I've ever done that. But the main thing of this run is speed and I've only got 40 base stats in that, so I had to make sure that I both got a Shedinja with good nature which I believe is jolly this time and also with perfect IVs in speed. Now I used PK Hex, a little downloadable tool to boot up to see my Shedinja and I just kept resetting until I got one with 31 IVs in speed. Now I don't often do it but I also made sure to do some EV training in speed, defeating a bunch of Rotatas and maxing out my speed EVs. So now we've got the best possible Shedinja for this challenge. But being prepared doesn't stop us from faltering when we need to take a fossil. And this time around, I choose the OG fossil, the dome fossil. Why? Because it's the same fossil I chose last time out. Yes, that's right. And a huge congratulations and a mention to Cap. Dustin, Martian, Lily, Lewis and Breezy Baby because you were all correct and I did in fact take the Dome Fossil. So we do now have a problem because we have to face either the Rival or Misty. Seeing as the Rival has a Pidgeotto with Gust, I opt to take on Misty because unfortunately for her, she's another one of those trainers that just can't hit me. Now, while I show you the footage here of the successful rival fight, and don't mention it because it was a lot of bloody torture, let me briefly explain to you why Leaf Green is such a bad game for Shedinja. Well, most of the trainers that you'll find, at least mandatory fights, tend to have either an Ekans, a Pidgey, or something like that with a Dark type, or a Flying type move. A lot of the pain of this run is just waiting for RNG to be on our side, and really that's all it is. With the completion of that fight on something ridiculous like the 50th or something attempt, we make it to Bill's house, separate him from the thing that he's inside of, please don't demonetize me, and make our way down to the SS Anne. Here we have another fight with the rival, which is no different really to the last one we just did. Although now his war turtle does have bite. But I'll be honest, by the time you've got six double teams set up and you've got six sand attacks off and things like Will-O-Wisp are finally taking effect, it really is kind of a breeze. I mean the hardest part is just getting plus six evasion, minus six accuracy. When that fight is done, we go up to the captain and we give him the old rub down. Or should I say rub off? Whispering in his ear, I'm the captain now. Because if MDB can reuse that fossil joke, I can reuse this one. When that's done, we leave the boat, we get access to Lieutenant Surge. And unfortunately, the hardest part of this gym was actually finding the damn switches. I don't think the Lieutenant actually has a move on his Pokemon that can affect us. As you can tell, the research I did in this run went to some different areas rather than actually finding out whether or not the information I'm saying is correct. I I think that's a hashtag breaths of pleb moment actually. Well the game really starts to open up now and we make our way to Lavender Town. Here up in the tower I do something that I never do in any of my playthroughs and instantly try and beat the rival. Now this really wasn't that eventful, I mean the worst Pokemon in his entire team is just that Pidgeotto. Actually the worst bit about this entire playthrough is the fact that I did this at something ridiculous like 4 in the morning this section. I originally started recording a different challenge, but that one will be coming in the future, and then I just had the brainwave to do this one, which was a stupid idea and never do it. We basically just kill time and wait for the strat to do its business, which essentially wins us most, if not all, the fights. 
And with that done, we finally go to make our way through to Celadon. Grabbing the tea and making our way to Saffron. But we'll leave that and come back to it. Erica's gym is one I actually... I go and do a little bit of thinking. I actually put my brain to use. And yes, I have got one. This is going to sound crazy on the face of it. But I go into this one paralysed. Because my thoughts were that... They've got poison powder, and that can hit us because it's a status affliction move. So things like uh, supersonic confuse ray, poison powder, sleep powder, hypnosis, those things can hit us. And naturally, if we get poisoned, well, that means we're dead. And I don't know about you, but I really tend to try and avoid that situation when I do these runs. I, I Something tells me that dying probably isn't the best thing to do. But that aside, she actually doesn't have anything that can hit us, given that we're paralysed and now can't be affected by poison. So yeah, somewhat, Erica actually proved to be one of the easiest gyms, but also gave me a lot to think about, which was kind of fun, it made a change. Tell you what wasn't fun though, the Giovanni fight in the rocket hideout. I'm closing my eyes because my god did this one bring back bad memories. Although the strategy really doesn't change, I mean it can't change to be honest, but although it doesn't really differ, it just something... This was a wall. This was a proper old-fashioned wall. And the worst bit about it was going back and grinding would have done absolutely nothing because all levels give us his speed and we were faster than pretty much everything. So again, we just have to kill time and, and wait, essentially. We just have to wait for RNG and it doesn't like to come easily. Unlike me. When we beat Giovanni, we finally get access to the Sylph Scope, and that means that we can rescue Mr. Fuji and then go from there down to Koga's gym. And Fuchsia as a place has just so much for me. Naturally, the first thing to do is make your way into the Safari Zone to grab the HM for Surf and what essentially turns out to be the HM for Strength. But in there, you can also grab the Quick Claw. Now, I didn't have record on for this because I always get lost in there. But we grab it, we give it to Shedinja, and that will be our held item. Now, if you were paying attention earlier, which I'll be honest, I don't blame you if you weren't half the time, even I don't pay attention, we do get affected by status moves. So, Toxic, yeah, that's going to hit us, unfortunately. Which meant that Koga took a goddamn lifetime. The great news for us is that the strat is the strat and I just have to leave it at that. And it's just a case of RNG. You could use save states. I'll uh, be honest, I wasn't feeling it at this point. So I had to reset every time something went wrong. And I cannot tell you the amount of times things went wrong. But I'm the sort of pleb that decided to take this challenge on and I'm the sort of pleb that's gonna finish it. And luckily, Koga was just the midpoint, so he was actually a fairly straightforward opponent to face. I say straightforward because he can't hit us with any of his moves apart from Toxic. The fact that I've said Toxic so much in this bloody sentence is... Oh, it, I, even I hate myself. But we win the fight, and guess what TM we get as a reward? That's right, toxic. And if you thought that that was gonna be where the end of that word comes, then you were mistaken. Because now I do something that shoots me so hard in the foot. I head over to Cinnabar, which you might think is a pretty okay decision. I mean, we've got access to Surf, so why not? Well, the reason is that Blaine actually poses a massive, and I mean massive, problem. So confusion damage in this game is calculated based off of the opponent's physical attacking stats, I believe. And apart from Ponyta and Rapidash, that's a bit of a problem. So I must have made it through to Arcanine a good four or five times, I won't lie actually. This gym was fairly straightforward. Once the double teams and sound attacks were set up, the fire moves they weren't really the issue. That issue was Confuse Ray PP because obviously we're fighting fire types and Willow Wisp, well, Willow Wisp doesn't affect them. So we are relying on confusion damage only, essentially. And every time I made it through to Arcanine, I didn't have enough Confuse Ray PP for it to knock itself out, bearing in mind he has access to healing items as well that we don't. 
So don't get me wrong, I, I sat there thinking for a bit, you know, maybe if every Confuse Ray that we used was a, a five turn Confusion and each one of those turns resulted in damage, then maybe this was possible and I didn't have to result to changing my moveset, but unfortunately the logistics of getting that to work, bearing in mind that we'd need it to happen on Arcanine as well. We've got three Pokemon and healing items and we need every turn to be damaged. It's nigh on impossible. Now don't get me wrong, you know, you, you, I perfectly could have gone away and come back, but this issue wasn't going anywhere, no matter how much I put it off, I have to beat Blaine. And the fact is that when speed isn't the issue, I don't have enough PP to beat Blaine. I mean, don't get me wrong, this definitely wasn't my smartest move, and if Saint of the Honest, my strategist, is watching this, he's gonna have his head in his hands, because I make a stupid decision that I'm going into one of those stubborn phases again and I'm not leaving until I beat Blaine. Which meant breaking out the Toxic TM and replacing Will-O-Wisp. And for anyone that's thinking, yeah, there is a fight coming up not too far from now that is going to be an issue because of that one decision. But at the end of the day, we can't, well, we can get to that fight, but it's going to be infinitely harder to get to that fight without replacing Will-O-Wisp with Toxic, so that's what I do, and as you can see by the footage that I'm playing now, once I've done that, the whole fight with Blaine becomes a, I wouldn't say it's, it's easy, it's not, it's very difficult, fire burns, you know, but it becomes a lot more simple and straightforward, and we can claim the seventh badge. Yeah, it's the seventh badge, it's the seventh badge on the card, but we still haven't got the sixth one, and in order to do that, we have to go into the Sylph Company building, which means a fight with that pesky bloody rival again, and another fight with Giovanni. Now, I don't advocate drinking, but if I had some beer left over from the Metropod Challenge, you can bet your ass I would have drank it here, because this rival fight is like hell on earth. He's now got a Pidgeot, which is a bad, bad thing, and also an Alakazam. So, yeah, he's got two really fast Pokemon. Hell, even Blastoise is surprisingly quick. Alakazam poses its own issues, and I'm going to talk about those in an upcoming fight that's right around the corner, actually, but the problem I've got is I have to go into that fight with Confused Ray PP high enough that I can do it, because he can't hit me. I just can't use Toxic on him. Which means I have to avoid getting hit by Wing Attack or Gust from Pidgeot while setting up six double teams. Bear in mind Pidgeot's got Keen Eye, so I can't even lower its accuracy. I'm relying solely on my evasion. I have to have Toxic rack up enough turns that it can knock it out, and then I have to deal with whatever else he puts in front of me until that Alakazam. And after the Alakazam, it doesn't get any easier, because after that he's got an Execute, and that thing has Leech Seed, which can hit me, I then have to rely on not getting put to sleep, or anything like that, it's just, this is a bad fight. Blastoise having Bite is the least of my problems, to be honest, it's, it's one of the best bits, because you can treat it like any other normal Pokemon. But, you know, it can be done, it's not impossible, it just takes time, and it's annoying, and that's essentially what Shedinja is. It's annoying. And just when you think it's all over with, because you've beaten your rival, you have to go and fight Giovanni, before you can progress the story. Which is another problem, because he's got Rock-type moves. And on top of that, he's got a Nidorino. And he's got... Obviously, in future fights, he's got his Nido King, his Nido Queen. He's got two poison type Pokemon that I can't use Toxic on. Which means I'm gonna have to, looking forward at least, this fight's not too bad, but looking forward, I'm gonna have to worry about confusion damage again because I replaced Will O Wisp. So I'm thinking, great, I've beaten the rival, I've beaten Giovanni, and now I've got access to Sabrina's gym. Oh, wait, she's got some problem Pokemon. She's got an Alakazam, and she's got Kadabra, and you know what ability that line has? Synchronize, which means if I go and whack a Toxic on it, I die. I kill myself. Using Toxic is a death sentence. Unless I go in Paralyzed, which in its own right has its own issues, because that reduces our speed to our horrid levels. But at the end of the day, it has to be done, so yeah, I go into this fight paralysed, and she instantly switches in 
to a Venomoth. And that Venomoth has Gust. So not only am I now also still relying on just Confusion damage, and she's got, well, she's got at least two Hyper Potions, but I seem to be getting hit way too freak. I seem to be getting hit all the time, which just resets the whole thing. And I won't lie, I won't lie, for Venomoth, I used save states. I'm going to say it. I used save states because failing time and time again just took too long. This one fight broke me more than any other fight did. I was sat there trying this for a good hour and a half. And, and that was without using the save states. After that, I was still sat there for a while. I went away and I, I crunched some numbers at this point And it works out, I think, 11-12% off the top of my head. That's the chance of you getting hit when you've got plus six evasion and you've given your opponent minus six accuracy, which is my whole strat. If there was a move in this game that had 12 accuracy, I don't think there's a player out there that would use it, even if it was you hit this move once, you defeat the whole trainer, because the chances, the sheer chance of you getting hit with that move is so low. 12% and yet I was sat here for way over two hours in total with and without save states included trying to not get hit by gust that has 12 accuracy the good news is that after so long we finally get rid of that venom off and then it's plain sailing because although she can recover stall we're paralyzed so synchronized can't hit us we get toxic off we win the sixth badge which is our seventh and I rejected the Sevi Isles, but so guess what that means? Now we have to go and fight Giovanni again. And now he's got a pain in the arse. He's a pain in the arse. He is a pain in the arse. He's got a Nido King, which isn't the problem because that thing has quite high attack stat. He's got a Nido Queen, which is just the worst. Don't get me wrong, the fact that he's got two Rhyhorn that can no rock type moves is, is, is a pain and, and I, I, I needed save states again here but not for them because getting past them was relatively easy. The double team, the sand attack, the confused ray, the toxic, it, it gets rid of mostly anything. But I needed save states for Nido Queen, and when I say save states, I, mean, I don't mean any of this midway through the battle, oh I got confusion damage off this time, let me make a save state. I mean, it comes out, I make a save state, if I take damage, I reload it, you know, I don't make another save state until after I've defeated it. It keeps the authenticity of, you know, of the run, at least as much as possible. Uh, the problem is that it's got such pitiful attack stat that it takes so much Confuse Ray PP. And I still need, you know, I still need Confuse Ray PP to be able to deal with Nido King. So this is a war on multiple fronts, because even if I set a save state, if I haven't got enough PP to deal with Nido King, I have to start the whole fight again and manage it better. Which actually happened on a few occasions. I thought things were going well, and I made the save state after defeating Nido Queen, because you can defeat Nido Queen, only to realise that I then only have four Confuse Ray, and, uh, you, you know, he still has a healing item. I'm in trouble. So while the idea of using a non-attacking move Shedinja is, you know, it's novel, it's not fun, it's not practical, and in fact borders sometimes on the impossible because you have to sit there and man-manage. Okay, I can only afford one Confuse Ray on this Pokemon because I need them all for the last two. I mean, fortunately, fortunately, after however many hours of trying, I manage. And that's all eight badges down. And things still don't get any easier because we now have to go and fight the rival again. And guess what? That Pidgeot now outspeeds us. And I did a, I did a lot of research before starting this. I mean, I looked at all of the teams, all of the movesets, of all the variations of what starter to pick. So I knew I was replacing Charmander because when he gets to the champion, he'll have a lower level Arcanine. And that scared the... Oh, that scared me. But the thing I didn't do was look at the speed stats. I mean, I know the BSTs are massively different, but then we can counter that with levels because we can, in theory, go up to level 100 while he's stuck at level 47 or whatever he is here. 
So I went online and I, I did some, some calculations. I went on a website, I can't remember which one, but I, I put in the information and it gave me a number, a, a range that Pidgeot speed could be. So I go and level up as much as I need to. And then, yeah, it, it takes a while. There's no, there's really no other way to say it. This is a nasty grind because it takes so long <laughs> it takes so long and I managed to level up to a point where I had a speed stat that was sort of midpoint in that range I was holding out and actually that was fortunate because it was at that level that we were able to consistently outspeed the Pidgeot and when we can outspeed it then the strategy just becomes the same as ever when we face a Pidgeot double teams toxic possibly confuse damage and honestly, the rest of the fight was somewhat straightforward. That Pidgeot really was the worst problem. I mean, don't get me wrong, Alakazam being confusion damage only is a pain. But by the time you've got six double teams set up, and you can start lowering with the sand attack, you get that chance brought down with every Pokemon, you know. You know, you bring it down to the 12% for a base 100 accuracy move. And the great thing is that not every move is base 100 accuracy you start bringing things down to ridiculous levels of well maybe six seven eight percent chance of getting hit which is just fantastic because it makes most pokemon thanks to toxic at least a complete breeze and then you beat the rival fight and you think great do you know what that's fantastic i've now leveled up to a point where I have a higher speed stat than the team that I've just faced, but then it dawns in the back of your mind that that exact team that we have just faced is going to grow more levels and they are going to be the final obstacle. And you realise that there's no point in even trying the Elite Four until you get to that point where your speed stat is higher than the speed stat of that Pidgeot, because that's the Pokemon on this team that has the highest speed stat of them all and he leads with it so there's really no point and that's the problem that means that you have to grind in victory road and the trainers there are lovely they they can hurt you but they give nice experience they make the job a lot easier but you still end up grinding having put all you know the numbers into the system and realizing what you need you still end up being level 77 before you have to go in and fight the elite four which for, for this challenge run and some of the other ones I've done, thinking of Leaf Green with a bag on where I was max level just to try and beat Lorelei, this felt worse than that did because it was, well, every fight was on a knife edge the entire time. But then you think, great, I've reached level 77, I have a speed stat that can go above and beyond Blue's final Pokemon, and you realise that you've been a pleb. This is the biggest hashtag breaths of pleb moment of the entire run because while I was focusing off on the very distant fights, I forgot to look at what was right before my eyes and that was Lorelei. And there's a big, big problem here in that her dugong and her cloister both know hail. Now, I, even I thought when I first realised that that there was a workaround. I know, I'll just confuse it. It'll take a lot of time. I have to wait for, a, you know, the full five turns of confusion with every turn being confusion damage. But, yeah, you know, that I've had that happen before in regular runs where Pokemon have hit themselves three, four times in a row. I can do it again here. And after the first one, I can just set up a Toxic and, and hope. And you think, yeah, that's brilliant. But on the fifth turn, Toxic still hasn't taken it out. And when it snaps out of confusion, it uses a move. Now it's not gonna use safeguard because it's got toxic set up on it and it's, it's too late. It's gonna use hail. And I know you're, you're probably sat there thinking the same thing I was that, oh, that's fine because although in five turns, it, that should be fine, toxic should kill it and confusion damage should kill it. But in practice, it doesn't because it just takes it down into red health and she has a full restore. And then you're sat there, and if you anticipate the heal, you'll go in for Confuse Ray again. But the problem is that Confuse Ray then has to have another turn where it does all of the damage in a row. By the time it snaps out of Confusion on that fifth turn just in the red health again, it's going to use Hail. And that's going to kill me. 
and there's genuinely no way around it because I can't dodge the hail this time. Dugong just has that little slither too much health, which unfortunately means the run is dead and it ends here. And despite all of the work to try and get there, we can't get past Lorelei. And for once, I'm not even going to run through with another Pokemon to try and beat Lorelei and go on and talk about, you know, Bruno and Agatha because Agatha's going to be a problem because now I've got Toxic and I'm going to have to try and worry about can I do an entire team of five Pokemon using just Confused and Damage and I don't think I have enough Confused Ray PP so I'm going to call it here. So at the start of this challenge I asked a simple question, can you beat Pokemon Leaf Green with only a, a Shijinja with no attacking moves? The answer is no, you, you can't because you can't dodge the hail. Now I mentioned that I started recording a different challenge before I had the brainwave to switch to this one and I can reveal actually that I started doing this exact challenge. The same move set, everything, in Emerald because I wanted to one up MDB. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've learned from this one that maybe you should leave some things to the, you know, the pinnacle and, and I will give MDB that one, there's there's no way. And actually, hell, hell to that, I'll give Arantula it, he did it in Platinum. You know, his methods would differ massively from how I would do it, but he did it in Platinum. I just can't do it with no attacking moves in Leaf Green. But the good news is that if you want, and I want to, I'm going to finish recording it, or at least go as far as I can with it. I'm going to try and do a Shedinja no attacking moves run in Emerald. That won't come out next week. It'll probably come out sometime in the near future, but it'll be a part two to this. And this has been a very talk through kind of playthrough. It's a different one. I'm not using a script. I'm sitting here in front of my microphone, just chatting away. And while it feels fun to me, it's probably boring. I know it's a very long video to you. I'm happy to go back to the scripted run, either to redo this one with a script, which I think I probably will do, and to do the Emerald one with a script. So you let me know in the comments whether or not you want me to drop this sort of playstyle, uh, remove this video and premiere this same run but scripted again, if you're not a fan of this commentary style. Or let me know if this is something you want to carry on, or whether or not you want me to even upload each challenge video twice. One like this, and one with a one with a script. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, please do like and subscribe. I know I say that every week, but you know, this sort of style actually allows me to say. It really does help me out. It's so brilliant to see you all interacting. So I would love you if you could like and subscribe. And drop a comment down below with challenge suggestions you'd like to see in the future. Of course, give me your constructive feedback on this style. I know it's massively different to what I've done before. So if you don't like it, I'm happy to drop it. Like I say, I'm happy to remove this video and then re-upload it with a script as usual if that's what you'd like. But you have to let me know. So whack that down in the comments. And like I say, I know I've just said that it might not come out next week. But I haven't got anything else on the go. So if you want me to do that Shedinja run next week, just let me know again in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.